Okay, let's talk about QR codes. What are they and how do they work? Well, the QR and QR code stands for Quick Response. They were originally developed back in 1994 as uh, a way to create a 2D barcode, just to be able to encode more information in a smaller space. Uh, I think it was back in 2000 that the ISO finally approved them, and they've had slow adoption starting off, uh, I think, back in the early 2000s in Japan, they were quite popular, and they've kind of spread from there. So there is a, if you want to build QR codes for mobile apps, for mobile websites, for websites in general, there's a great GitHub repo by David Shim, which is this QR code generator, just basic JavaScript that generates an image with information encoded inside of it. So with a QR code, you can um, encode URLs, text, numbers, any sort of text information, um, including links for websites. So how does it work? Well, this is a, a sample here. This is a great image I took off of another website. You have in three of the corners, these are position markers. This is what helps orient the QR code so we know what's the top, what's the bottom, what's the left, and what's the right. There's only three of them as opposed to four. There's an alignment marker, which helps give a reference point against these other three. So with the position and the alignment marker, you know which are the four sides. Now the blue part here, the timing patterns, there's a line that runs down here from the top to the bottom and from the left to the right. This is um, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, or whatever color you're using or colors you're using, just the light and the dark alternating. So that will allow the scanner to tell how big are each of the squares. Well, you can look at this, these lines and these lines, the way they're aligned to figure out. They call it the timing pattern, but it tells you how big each of the squares are. Uh, the version number, so what kind of QR code is it version 1, 2, 3, 4? Uh, version 1, I think, was originally only 21 by 21. Uh, version 4... It's up to close to 200. I think it's something like 177 pixels across. So it's getting quite large. You can store a lot of information. Now, the way the pattern works is there's different areas on there where the information gets encoded, and the information is actually repeated. So if parts of the QR code are messed up, it's OK. You can have the information being displayed two or three or four times within the QR code. So if part of it gets mangled, you still get all the information inside of there. Um, yeah, oh, one thing that's not on here. So, I mean, all, the, all this part here in the middle, this is the data. So this is all the information that you're encoding. One thing that's not on this diagram is the quiet zone. Around the outside of a QR code is a quiet zone. It is intended to be four of these squares, these little tiny squares, four of those thick. That's how much space there should be around the QR code with nothing inside there. That way, it's easier for the scanner to differentiate what's the QR code and what's not. You don't want to have text or other QR codes pressing up against the edge of this. You need to have the gap so it can tell where these markers are and where the QR code sits. Okay, so that's the basics of how it works. Now, using this library, so this website, David Shim's website, I've just I've downloaded his script. I've included it inside of my page. All you have to do. And then there is, here I will uncomment this. You create a QR code object. This is in his script. So we're referencing an object inside of his script called QR code. And it takes either a reference to some element on the page or just the ID of an element. I have a div with the ID output, which is this. This is pointing to this div. And then there's an options object. So you pass in this option, the text, well, that can be just a string or it can be a URL, something like that. You define the width or height, how big you want to make it. You define the two colors. So you can have this branded for your website. You can have white and black, sure, that's the standard, but if you want to do something different, like I've got maroon here as the dark color on white as the background, but we could make this any color at all that we wanted. Any hex code is going to work in here. And then QR code correct level. So HMRL, high, medium, and low. Um, 
the correct level. That's what I was talking about before with the code, the information being repeated multiple times. High means it's going to be repeating it as many times as possible within that space. Okay, so I save that, reload the page, and there it is. There's my QR code generated. So 256 by 256 is the size that I'm generating. Um, theoretically, this is the size, the biggest size that I can use right now, but effectively it's the same thing. My CSS is stretching it to make it a little bit bigger. And <laughs> look at that, the browser is even telling me that's the information that's been encoded in there um, because it's being created as an image tag and the title attribute is being set to the same thing. So now I can use the scanner on my phone, I can scan this and it will actually open up that website. Um, I've got another little bit of code to show the other couple of methods that he's got. I'll uncomment that. And this is now, uh, I've got a click listener on the whole web page. I'm clearing out the old code. So QR code, that's my variable that contained this. I'm calling the clear method on it to wipe out the old one. And then I'm calling make code. So make code is going to encode this information and then automatically display it on the page. So refresh. If I click anywhere on the page, did I not get the, should be coming up here, am I caching something? Oh, I just hadn't saved the uh, the other page. That's why. All right, so we re refresh with the new saved version. I click anywhere on the page, and then it's calling the make code function to replace this. So now it's pointing to Google.ca instead of the Phil Murray website. Okay, so there you go. That's QR codes. That's how they work. This is the reference for how it breaks up into the different parts. Remember that you can actually change the colors on this. This script will let you do that. And if you want, you can, if you're using correct level high, you can actually come in here, save this image, go into Photoshop or some other image editing software and put some branding. You could put a logo or something inside of here because the code repeats in different parts of the whole barcode, it means that you can lose some of the information and it will still work. So you could put a small logo or something inside of here. Just be careful and test it. If you're putting branding in here, if you're actually removing some of the information, make sure that you test it to see that it is still working with the logo there. But very easy to change the two color codes to match whatever the branding is for your website. All right, so I hope that helps you out. hope that answers some questions you might have had about QR codes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.